Hey, Terry Caliendo from Dedicated Managers back once again. It's been a while since my last video. I got uh, hung up on a few other projects, but getting back a little bit into this one, and I wanted to show real quick how I am auto-populating a date from the server timestamp, the Firebase server, not a local um, timestamp. In other words, uh, I could populate this with JavaScript from the current date on the person's computer, but that might be wrong um, and could be manipulated. Not that it's a big deal, but um, it might be wrong. So I'd like it to be as accurate as possible. So just to give an overview, um, if I go back to my dashboard here and I was to create a new client, um, when I add that new client, it creates the new client. Uh, it's an empty client and auto populates the date there. So I want to show how I do that in code. And again, this is the date from the server, not from um, my local clock, even though they are the same in this instance. So if we open up the, um, the functionality here. So there's, this is inside of a bigger program, so there's a lot going on. But the, the big thing to look at is that um, I'm adding a new entity to the Firestore, a new collection. And so here's the typical Firebase Firestore collection. Um, where you send in the collection ID. This is a variable on uh, currently. Um, and then you add some, some data to it. My, my, um, this sub meta entity or this, um, sub entity meta local stuff is simply a, um, an object that I create with the, um, Firebase timestamp as one of the parameters. So, um, you know, this object that I'm sending in down here to the add is going to be the data initially set on the um, in the Firestore. And um, the big one to look at is this created at key uh, property. And it is set to the um, Firestore timestamp um, uh, function, which behind the scenes, Firestore does some stuff when it submits this, and then the server receives it, and it automatically fills the timestamp in there. And what you end up getting back is a Firestore uh, timestamp. So, um, or, or what ends up getting populated into the field is a Fire Firebase uh, Firestore timestamp. And I haven't found any documentation on the timestamp. I just had to console.log it out to see what it was. So I'm not even positive. I should have added, I'm going to post to the forums and see if there is documentation for it. There is documentation on the um, Android end, but I'm not seeing it on the uh, JavaScript end. So anyway, um, I call Firebase Firestore collection, right? This is the, um, uh, um, the collection that I want to add it to. And then I add a, the data. And that gives me back a promise, um, which gives me a document reference. So if we want to go look at the documentation, um, we would go to the reference section and JavaScript and Firestore and then... Um, We'll look at the collection reference first. So the collection reference, that's what this is right here. This up to here, this returns a collection reference. And so then add is a functionality of that collection reference. So I'm on, again, I'm on the, um, the collection reference page. And add is a method that I can call on it, which I am calling, and that add method returns a document reference. So this, so up to here, up to this add, um, this returns a a promise which is filled with a document, um, oops, a document reference. So I'm sorry, this thing here, when I call this add, um, it returns a promise that's filled with a document reference. So um, the add returns a promise containing um, a document reference. So if I click on the document reference, I can see what I can do with that document reference. And in here, I can see that um, I can go get that parent collection again if I really wanted to. Uh, but what I'm concerned with is getting the get. Um, so I will end up taking that document ref, calling get on it, and that's going to return a document snapshot, which has the data that I just populated, which is going to have the, um, the timestamp. Um, you know, this timestamp here, 
right here, right, right, was set in my my object that I'm sending to the to the add function. So now that's that 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 information is now stored in Firebase, um, and after I add it, I'm getting the document back. I'm getting a reference to um, to the created document, but now I have to go and this this ref is the reference to it. This goes and actually gets the document snapshot, which allows me to get the data. And so when I call docref.get, uh, .get returns a promise containing a document snapshot. And document snapshot allows me to get the data, which is all the data, or I can just get a specific um, field name. And that's actually said right up here, .data or .get field. So what I'm doing is I'm doing uh, taking that document snapshot that's returned from the get, um, and now I'm looking for the field created at, and that's the field that I created up here that I sent in down here. Um, now it's I'm calling the server and saying, hey, go get me that the, the contents of that field, um, and that that returns a uh, Firestore timestamp, which is not a typical timestamp. It's actually down to the nanosecond. Um, so I have to call the seconds on it, and then I multiply those seconds by a thousand because um, the date object, so this is going to get put into, I'm turning seconds into milliseconds, and then I'm putting it into an epoch milliseconds because it's the, the seconds is since the epoch, typical Unix timestamp. Um, and then I'm sending that to date because date expects milliseconds and this is returning seconds. So I just multiply by a thousand to get that extra three zeros on there. And then I, I fire that into the date. And now I can create a date object from uh, that timestamp. And then um, I can uh, pull off the, you know, the individual parameters, whatever I want based on the JavaScript date. Here I am, um, you know, getting the date which is um, simply the, the get date function. So that's my, um, you know, that's my uh, 16. Um, the month, the month comes back as 0 to 11. So you got to add one to it, but the month is in the middle and the year is in the beginning. So that's basically what I'm doing is I'm pulling off the year from the date object, the month, and the date. So you can format that however you want by pulling off whatever you need from the the, the date object. So I create a new date, I assign that to current date, and then I manipulate it to get my pieces um, by calling certain functions, and then I create a string um, that has you know that, that particular format that I want. But you could do anything with your format here if you wanted slashes. You could put slashes in between, um, dots, whatever. You could reorder it, whatever you'd wanted to do. Um, and then so then what I do in my my function, so really that's the you know for, for the grand scheme of things, that's that's the way to do it, um, at least that I've found is where you set the object, and then after it's set, you call the reference that you get back, and you get the um, document snapshot, which is the data that you just set, and now this created at which I sent in here as a function. Remember this this was a function um, created at was set to a function when we sent it into the add um, uh, or whatever whatever job, whatever Firebase's function returns here, um, its special thing that it returns gets put into created at. That gets sent in, added to the database, and then when it comes back, um, we get that, that reference to the document that we just created. So then I can just go and get the actual document snapshot, which contains the information, um, and um, once I have that snapshot, I can go and get my field, that particular field that's created. And now, you know, that function is now um, actually a um, timestamp object. And then I pull the dot seconds method off of it um, and, and, you know, and multiply by a thousand. So what I'll actually do here, what I can do is do a console dot log. Um, and I can I can log out this so you can see what the actual object is. Um, and let's put a little reference in here so we know what it is. Uh, Firestore timestamp. 
object. Helps if you use the same quotes. All right, we'll save that. And if I didn't create any errors, I should be able to go into back to the dashboard. I'll add a new client. Let me open the inspector. Looks like it's going to reload. That's a hot reload from when I saved. A little slow. And so now I'll do the add new client. Let me get to the console. Add new client. Uh, whoops, got to type it right. That figures. Uh, where did I put it? This is where you wish you could go back into recording a couple seconds. Uh, con soul. Now let's try going back to, it's probably going to auto reload. So I'm going to go back to the dashboard, clear everything. I'll add that new client. Um, we can see that the date was auto populated and what did I call it? I called it uh, Firestore timestamp object. So here's the Firestore timestamp object. And so here's what it returns. It's got a nanoseconds and a seconds. And I couldn't find any documentation on this. If you'd search for um, Fire, Firestore timestamp, um, you get this, but it's in the, oh, there it is. Go figure. All right, so here's the methods. I should be using then something else. Um, I could just be using from date. All right, so I took a break there for a second because I had to go and research this, and actually I could have made my life a lot easier, a little bit easier. Um, yeah, instead of using the um, the um, uh, dot seconds to pull off the dot the seconds because that's not really the right way to do it, I should be using the methods uh, that they give us, and they actually do give us a method um, to date, which returns a JavaScript date object. So uh, here where I have the, the dot seconds times a thousand, I can actually change that code to, um, I'm going to just fast forward here what I did. So uh, I, I took this new date here, I copied um, this code down here, um, and then removed the, the dot seconds, got rid of the thousand and turned it into the method. So um, this is how you should get the date from the, um, the created at, the created at this is a, up to here, is, as I said before, this returns the um, JavaScript or a, a Firebase timestamp object, and then I'm calling the toDate method, which I just learned about, uh, right here, and this, uh, um, right here as part of the timestamp. Um, and so that does the same thing, and then that lets me get rid of that, that other line. It just makes it a little shorter. Um, and future proof in case they change dot seconds to something else internally because now I'm using an approved method. Um, so any of everything else is still the same. Um, I'd like to see, I'm going to post to the boards and see if I can, if, if I don't have to do this, notice I'm, I'm um, you know, I'm setting something to the server. I'm taking this created at, I'm sending it in on my object. And then once that's finished with that promise there, now I'm reaching back out to the store to go and get the data um, and pull that field. I don't know if I can just tell, um, you know, f uh, f the Firestore, Firebase object somehow, if I can just ask it to go and get a timestamp and return it and then do something without having to send it to the, um, to the function, to the add function, then I could get it up, you know, I could just get that date earlier. I could get that that date here and a promise and then do all this stuff after that date is returned. Um, but for right now, that's what I have to do. I, I, I set the value to um, their special thing. I send it into the add function um, when I create the new entity. And then when I get the reference back to the new entity, I get the snapshot which contains the data from the server, which now that, um, as I've said a thousand times in this video, that uh, document snap snapshot now contains the server timestamp actually stamp actually populated, um, and so I get that um, I get that value, um, and then I call 
Um, that's the object there, and then I call to date on it, which returns a date, and then I do my date manipulation, which all stays the same. So um, I'll, I'll do another video if it turns out there is an easier way to do it. Uh, as of right now, that's the way I'm doing it. Um, the other interesting thing is that Firebase is actually smart enough. Um, so I do this. I, I create this new entity, and then in my then function, um, this is the then function. Um, so that's where I do all the updating, but that's asynchronous. So then I move on down here um, to do some more updating, and then I return my doc ref, and ultimately the function that called this is going to call that um, that data again. So we've got kind of a race condition going on where I could call that data before you know this gets sent in and returned, um, or before this gets returned. So um, let's make sure that is the then function. No, that's part of that. What, what I meant is before this, getting confusing here, before um, this is actually, this returns a promise. This, um, which ends, oh, now I'm going rogue. Um, this then function ends here. That's what it is. So this right here, um, this this whole functionality, I'm not sure if I highlighted that before, I may have, but this functionality um, is asynchronous to this functionality down here in the returning of the doc ref ID. And the function that calls this goes and gets that um, that um, that that document snapshot again. So there's a race condition that this this might not have filled that field out. But the, the calling function actually um, gets a snapshot, so Firebase has the ability to um, communicate you know, real time with itself, and so I don't think the race condition is a problem here. Ultimately, I might have to move this stuff um, right here inside of this, this, um, this return if it becomes a problem. I know that that last part was very confusing. I've actually confused myself, so I'm going to stop there. Hopefully you got something out of this. The, the idea was just to show how to, um, you know, store a timestamp, get that timestamp back, and then auto-populate it into the field. Um, so that's what I do here is where I get this auto-populated. That's the main thing to try and understand. Terry Colleen, dedicated manager. Sorry for getting confusing at the end. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, um, shoot me a, a comment or contact me at dedicatedmanagers.com. Please subscribe to my videos, all that good stuff, if you're interested in this kind of video uh, and, and getting um, totally confused at the end of them. Hopefully they're helpful at the beginning, though. So thanks a lot. Have a great day. Happy programming.